Hey guys, welcome back. My name is AJ and I want to personally thank you guys for tuning in to the Beamer Dude channel. Today we're going to be talking about a suspension component, specifically for the E46 M3 that I don't see installed that really probably should be. You don't want to miss out, so stay tuned. <laughs> Suspension. Whether you're lowering your cars with springs or coilovers, the end result is pretty much the same. Basic premise is to bring the tire and the fender closer together, thereby lowering the vehicle's center of gravity, thereby improving the vehicle's overall balancing and handling characteristics from their factory state. I myself may be a special case. I would call myself a little overzealous. I generally replace all suspension components I possibly can when I first pick a vehicle up because you can't always trust that the work was done properly or was actually done at all. So it's a great way to get a baseline on the actual repair job that we can know where it came from and who did it. Let's go ahead and crack on to the point of today's video, the E46 M3. Not to be confused with the Sport model from the E46 variant, the 325 Sport, the 330 Sport, the the E46 M3 has its own suspension geometry specifically for itself, has uh, thicker control arms, has a different offset for the strut mounts, and that is exactly what today's video is about. Generally speaking, when you see an E46 lowered, you see them lowered with a traditional camber plate. Now, that's okay for a normal E46 uh, because there is no caster uh, built into the control arms. It, you don't really have any issues with caster. And if you're not familiar with caster, let me take a brief second and explain why that's so important to this car. Feel free to pause this if you want to uh, actually read this um, Webster Dictionary definition of caster. Um, but for the E46 M3, this basically means that the uh, driver's side and the passenger side wheel are offset. Uh, the driver's wheel is pushed a little bit towards the driver's driver's footwell and the passenger side the wheel is actually pushed towards the passenger side bumper. Um, this gives the vehicle uh, a, a lot more stability going straight down the road. It uh, helps with instability and unstable roads, road changes, uh, elevation changes, and self-centering. And for the E46 especially it helps with uh, this the roll feel for centering uh, which is a big deal for E46 M3 since uh, they come with caster built in. Uh, the car can feel darty if you don't if you basically take this out without accompanying it for down in the lower control arm. So with that uh, brief description, let's get back to the video. Now that I've shown you the E46 and what it needs, let me show what I picked up to resolve the issue. All right guys, so this is what I picked up for the E46 M3. Um, as you can see, the box is unmarked, but uh, these cost me about 170 bucks. And I think it was a, a good spend because uh, generally speaking from what I could tell, um, caster camera plates for the E46 M3 seem to be a lot more expensive. Um, they generally range from $150 all the way up to about $500. Bucks. So these cost me $170 shipped to my door. So as you can see, these cool these camber plates here, um, they have adjustment in the camber area and they have adjustment here left to right for caster. Um, that's really important for the E46 M3 as you guys saw before. Um, the way that the wheel sits into the fender well um, is basically a directly result at where the caster is set here. Um, the factory settings have the caster set about a position like this and at the moment with the standard camber plates they're set at about right here in the center and it's only adjusted with the camber uh, positive and negative. Uh, while that works for non-M3s, it's very bad for the E46 M3, have issues with self-centering, have issues with tracking straight down the road, inconsistent straight driving down the straight line, just a ton of issues can amount from uh, just this simple um, issue here. So we're going to be installing these on the BC coilovers. These do come with a assortment of colors to fit assortment of different uh, coilovers. And uh, these, one of these should definitely fit the E46, the BCBR coilovers. So without further ado, let's go to get the E46 pulled up front and center, uh, get this bad boy installed, and uh, we'll get off to uh, an alignment shop either today or tomorrow. But in the meantime, I can show you a cool and a simple app that'll help you get the suspension set up good enough so that you can get to an alignment shop without eating up your tires. <laughs>
up my 14 mm wrench here. I can basically go counterclockwise up here. And uh, this loosens this up so that I can unscrew this and get the adjustment collar out of the way. So now that I have that out the way, I can hit this with the impact driver, which is the whole reason I went to uh, Arbor Freight this morning, get the impact driver, because I really am trying to save my wrist here. Um, hit this with a 14, I think it's a 14 or 15. Okay, so scratch that, it was definitely not a 14 or a 15, it was actually a 17. So have a 17 impact driver. Make sure when you're doing these things with high torque, um, you want to use the impact drivers here, because uh, if you don't, they can shatter, explode in your face, and that wouldn't be good, and then you guys, uh, will probably be coming back to me telling me that I should have done that. So, um, yeah, make sure you use an impact driver here. I'm going to go ahead and grab the impact gun, and let's hopefully, hopefully we can get this thing uh, knocked off of here. And just like that, we have it off. I can't believe that I hadn't done this sooner. I know this is not the most expensive one, but this is a game changer for anybody who's been uh, doing things in their garage. Uh, they are a hobbyist. Uh, this is a game changer. Uh, it is on the heavier side, but I mean, just look at what it did. and It made light work of something that might have taken me uh, about 10 minutes to get off. So definitely recommend that. Another area that I was describing uh, about scrubbing um, before, um, when you have improper alignment specs, when you lower these vehicles without the caster plates, you get this scrubbing issue. If you're running the proper tire size uh, on the front of your E4673 and you're scrubbing right here, but not on the driver's side, it's generally because the caster is now uh, messed up. Um, you should not uh, rectify this issue by getting a smaller diameter tire. Um, the proper tire size should not rub the fender liner here if you have the correct uh, caster setting. So here's another telltale sign that if you don't have the correct setup, uh, it will be doing this. And these things are not fun to replace. I believe last time I checked, they're about 190. Uh, excuse me, they're about 90 bucks to replace. Um, just this plastic here at the dealership, and uh, it's just not a good look if you drive one of these cars and not have this in there. So rather than taking this out or buying a new one, try to get to it before the issue becomes a bigger one, and um, you should be able to avoid this altogether. So I have it installed here now, and uh, even though it doesn't look very much different from this position, um, let me go ahead and explain what this means. So uh, having the caster uh, plate in here with the camber adjustment means I can still adjust camber uh, this way, but it also means that I have adjustment uh, for the caster for where the strut sits within reference to the fender in this direction here. If you look underneath, you can see that they are slotted uh, right here on the sides. Uh, give me uh, the adjustment I need left to right. Even though I'll probably never need to move the uh, strut in this manner again, it is nice to have this adjustability. And uh, alignment shops generally love when you have the factory adjustments built into the car um, because they don't generally like uh, messing or aligning cars that have been lowered already. They generally charge you a bit more. So uh, this is just one more thing to make your alignment guy a little happier.
right guys, so I, I got everything installed. You see that I, I, I got the uh, strut mounts installed. I got them uh, kind of moved over into their uh, furthest, most positive position, kind of mimicking the stock locations. Again, this is all um, just kind of a rough estimate of where it should be. I'm fairly certain that my alignment is gonna be very, very far off at this point, but I do have a cool little tip, a little trick, uh, an app you can download um, to show uh, where your vehicle is, where the caster is, where mainly the camber uh, settings. Um, it is going to be tow that's going to be what uh, damages tires the most. So I'm going to make absolutely sure that tomorrow, um, the moment that the place is open, since today is President's Day, it's probably not not open. I'm going to go there, be the first one there to get the car aligned uh, because tow is what actually destroys tires. So um, what, we, what we'll do today is we'll set the camber. We've already set the camber on top of the, uh, the strut mounts. Uh, and their exact position on both sides. They're both matching right now, but once we get down on the ground, we'll be able to see exactly where the wheels set. Sit up, 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 you can sit up. the car is not on the ground you can already see an improvement of the centering of the tire you can also see that uh, right here on this side um, the wheel is actually pushed further back um, to its stock location and no I don't have a picture of how it looked before but I can probably find a stock image of caster and I'll insert it here and now that you see that I have uh, the caster plates on, you can see the front angle right here, the distance between the, the actual bumper and the wheel. Uh, they're basically centered on both sides. So um, that's what we're looking for here. And um, the, but, but, the truth, uh, but the true test will be the passenger side. So um, once I get the passenger wheel on, we'll get the car dropped down and we will see um, where the wheel sits, uh, how much scrub we have if we go full lock left and full lock right. And hopefully we resolve this issue. So we have everything tightened and buttoned up. Um, wasn't too difficult. Um, I wanted to show you guys this process without showing you some things that are already done uh, quite a bit on YouTube, such as installing coilovers. Don't want to be that guy. So we will be having to lower the car down, especially before we go get uh, the vehicle in line. Maybe just a, a hair, maybe a, a, maybe three fourths of an inch, um, maybe not even that much. But uh, I am happy with uh, the centering on uh, the actual uh, wheel and the fender. Now, uh, what I would to talk. On the point that I was talking about earlier about getting the camera settings just right, um, well, close enough to so you can drive the vehicle to your alignment shop, I use this app on my phone called Angle Meter uh, P. Um, it's this app right here. Um, basically, you can see here it uses your phone's gyro, and uh, you can get the angle uh, at which um, the wheel is by placing the wheel at the uh, placing the phone, excuse me, at the center of your wheel and getting uh, both sides to match pretty close. So. So let me see if I can show you guys this uh, with one hand. Uh, I'm not very good at this uh, vlog style without a tripod, so bear with me if the, if the camera's a little shaky. But you see we get the phone and we place it in the middle of the wheel here and lean it up against the roundel, kind of lean in the bottom. You see that we have 86, 87 uh, as the angle here. Now this only works uh, on the uh, vertical axis. It does not work on the horizontal one. So um, again, you see here, just for making things uh, the same it's 86 87 it's pretty much the standard so we're gonna go to the other side of the car and we're gonna give that a shot over here as well placing it there you can see that it is a fair amount off on this side so what we'll do is we'll go up top we'll adjust the camera settings we'll come back and try to get this uh, a lot closer we're in the realm of where we need to be uh, so this is a cool little tool that I use uh, to get the camera settings where I need them just so I can get to the alignment shop. Um, this is not going to resolve all your issues, but great little tool nonetheless. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully, you guys like today's video. If you like today's video, go down in the comment section down below. Leave me a comment. And let me know what you liked. And while you're down there, hit that like button or hit that dislike button if you just like the video. And if you do that, let me know why. Because I did drive the car around for about a week after I got the alignment. The car rides beautifully. I, I definitely recommend you guys doing this to your M3s. If you haven't done it already, it will improve your turn in. It will improve your self-centering. And that scrubbing issue is now solved. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for watching the Beamer Dude channel and make sure you guys stop by the Beamer Dude Automobile Garage and as always guys thank you guys for watching and peace out and Godspeed guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Mm-hmm.